In this chapter, we're going to bring in our image and we're going to scale it to the correct size. Now, the way we want to do this is to choose a view, and I'm going to work in my front view. But before I bring in this image, let's go ahead and create a new document. That way we know that we're all working to the same dimensions. I'll just select New from my standard toolbar here, and I'm going to choose Small Object Millimeters. Now, when Small Objects Millimeters starts, I'm presented with my four views. I'll just double click on the front view because that's the view I'm going to bring my drawing into. And we'll start from there. I prefer to work in the front view strictly because this sketch is the front view of the walkie talkie and I think it just makes more sense to work this way. Some people prefer to work in the right view. I happen to prefer to work in the front, whichever you're more comfortable with. So, as I mentioned previously, a common way to bring in an image is to use the background image. And we're going to do this a little bit differently. So, we're going to use the picture frame option. And we can find this under our views, and we can choose picture frame, or we can just type the word picture frame in our command line. So when I go ahead and click this, we're going to go into our sample files, chapter 2, and we're going to open the walkie-talkie sketch RGB that we created in a previous lesson. I'll select that, click open, and I'm just going to move my screen around a little bit better and zoom out just a little bit. Now, if we look at the command line, you can see it's asking us to place the first corner of the picture frame. And I like to place that first corner right in the zero, zero of our world, so right where the green and the red lines come together. I'll just type a zero and enter, and you can see that that's placed the first corner right at that zero, zero point of our world. Next direction is going to be where we want the bottom of the object to be. So it's kind of the lower right corner of the image. And at the moment, I'm not going to worry about the size of this. I am just going to make sure I get it nice and square. So I'm going to hold down the Shift key and drag the cursor out to the right. And I'll just kind of drag it here. It's going to end up being too small, I believe, but we'll see what we get. And when I get it to about where I want, I'll just click and it's placed the image. So right now, the image is probably not the correct size and it's not in the final location I would like it to be. What I would really like is for this ground plane to be located right about the center of our document. But I'm going to worry about scaling the object first. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a couple of lines here to help me out. First one I'm going to draw is just going to be a line that represents my ground plane. And I can kind of click anywhere on that plane. And again, I'll hold down my shift key, drag out to the right, and click. Now I'm going to go up to the antenna here, and I'm going to apply the same command again. So instead of choosing from the toolbar here, remember if I want to apply the same command, I can just tap the spacebar, and now we're starting our polyline again. This time I want this to be centered right about the tallest point of our antenna there. So I'll just click once, hold down the shift key, and drag out. I have two lines drawn here, and I can measure these lines to find out what size this object is. So I'll just click on my linear dimension tool, and I have my end snaps on. And I'll snap once here, once here, and I'll drag that out to the right. So as you notice, currently our walkie-talkie is only 56.44 millimeters tall. The overall height of this walkie-talkie wants to be 163 millimeters tall. So we're going to need to scale that. So what I can do is I can just grab all of this, including my dimensions and my lines, and I'm going to select my scale tool in the toolbar, and I could select scale 3D or scale 2D for this particular object because it is a two-dimensional object, it's just a flat plane, and it's just some curves. So I'm going to right-click to select 2D scale, and it's asking me for an origin point. So I'm just going to click right down here, and I have my end snaps on, so I can click right at the point of that arrow. And I'll zoom out, and then zoom back in at the top of the arrow, and click right when I get a snap there. Now I can visually drag these up, but what's kind of nice is now that I've told it the origin and I've told it the place to start scaling it from, Rhino actually knows what that distance is. So now I can just type the distance I want it to expand that to. So in this case, it's going to be 163 millimeters. So I can type 163, hit enter, and right away the object's jumped. And if I zoom in on the dimensions here, you can see that that's 163. So I'm going to select my dimensions and delete that, and I can get rid of that top line as well. So I have my ground plane placed here, and we're going to use that to locate this image. So I'll select my image, I'll choose Move, 
and I'll use the endpoint of this line. And how I'm going to do this is Rhino has a nice little feature. If I hold down the Shift key and start moving this vertically, either up or down, and then just tap the Tab key, you can see that line is turned white. And what I can do is I can let go of my Shift key now. And notice if I move my cursor off to the right or left, it doesn't move the image to the right or left. I've now constrained the image to a vertical move only. And what that means is because we're constrained, I can type a zero. That line is going to zero itself right on this red line. Now I can choose that and I can delete that. So now that we have that point, what I want to do is line up my center line, and we're going to do that in a very similar fashion. Now notice the midpoint of this actual bounding box, or this plane, is not in the same location as my center line. So we do need to be a little bit careful of that. So I'm going to zoom pretty far in here, and again I'll press my move command, and I'll click the center of that vertical line, it's this line here. So about the center there. This time I'm going to move the image while I hold my shift key off to the right or left and just tap tab. Again I get that right line. So now we've constrained this to a horizontal location. Notice if I move my cursor up or down that it doesn't affect the position vertically of my image. So now that we're constrained to a left or right and I've told it where the center is of this object, I can type a zero. And that's going to move us to our vertical center line. We've aligned this image vertically on the center line, and we've aligned our ground plane on the center line. And we've also scaled this to the correct height. So now our underlay sketch is almost ready for us to use. A couple other things I do want to do. Let's take the object, and right now if we look at our properties, it's on the default layer. I'm going to switch that to a different layer, so I'll switch that to layer 1, and I'll click once on the word layer 1, and I'll just change the name of that layer to Underlay. Hit Enter. And under Properties, we're going to change the opacity of this. So if you see this kind of toothpaste looking tube, it's supposed to represent a paint tube, I'll just click on that. And under Trans here, I'm just going to kind of drag that off and make that a little more transparent. You can choose to kind of make that what you want. I'm making mine right around 58% there. So if I double click right on the trans slider, we'll make that 60% transparency. And what that does is if I draw any lines or have anything behind it, I can see right through that object now. If I go to my perspective window, the same thing there. You can see we can see the grid partially behind this object. And then because I don't want to accidentally move the underlay at all, I'll just go ahead and lock that layer. So let's go ahead and save this object. I'll go to File, Save As. And I'm going to save this in my Chapter 2, and I do want to call this Walkie Talkie Sketch Start. I get a warning in my particular case that this sketch already exists, that's fine. I'll just hit Yes and replace it. And that finishes our look at bringing in our sketch underlay.